In today's tutorial video, we'll be creating a program that will be able to detect as well as recognize faces. And we'll also be doing this in real time using our webcam. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So before we create this program, make sure you have Python and OpenCV already set up. We'll be using some other libraries, but I'll get to them later. Please also remember to like the video and subscribe. Let's get into the video. All right, so I already have a Python project set up in Visual Studio Code. I'll be using Python 3.9. So in your command prompt or terminal, we need to PIP install face recognition. Make sure you have OpenCV as well. Back in our code, we can type import face recognition as fr, and then we can also import numpy as np, then import cv2, then we also need to import os. For the next part of this tutorial, we'll need to create a folder. Now, I've already created a folder and I stored it in my desktop. So if I open the folder, then we can see all these images of the known faces. These known faces will be the faces that our program will use to look for other faces that are unknown to the program. Make sure to drag all the faces the bot knows in here and make sure that the name of the image file is the same as the name of the person in the image. So for example, here I have Elon Musk, then I have myself, etc. So make sure to copy the path to your folder and then back in our code, we need to create a faces path variable and store our path in here as a string. Make sure to add double backslashes to indicate that it is a path. For the next part, I'll be creating a function called get face encodings and inside of it, I'll create a variable to store all the names of the faces by using os.listdir and then passing the faces path variable inside here. This will retrieve the names of each file in our folder. We can then create an empty list called face encodings. Then I'll type for i name and enumerate face names and I'll create a face variable and store fr.loadImage file where this argument will take the current image that we're iterating through. So we'll create an f string and then type faces path with two backslashes and then name. What this will do is it will load the face image into a numpy array. Then down here we say face encodings.append fr.face encodings then the current face and then the first index. What this will do is it will get the encoding of each face and store it in our face encodings list. The reason we need these encodings is because the program can't recognize faces directly from the image. And so we need to encode the data in the image to another form of data that the program can use to recognize faces. We can then return face encodings as well as the face names. Outside of our function, we can now finally retrieve this data in two more variables and then type get face encodings. Now we need to reference our webcam. So in this video variable, we type cv2.video capture and pause zero to use our webcam. We can then set a scale variable and set it to two. We'll be using this variable to scale down the webcam images so that our programs run faster. After this, you need to create a while true loop where we'll capture the current frame of our webcam by typing success image equals video.read and our frame will be stored in this image variable. To then resize our image, we create a variable for it so we have a reference to it. Then we type cv2.resize and we pass image, then create a new set of brackets, then image.shape with index one. This will give us the width, then divide this by the scale variable we created and then also convert it to an integer in case we get a float value. You can now copy this and then as a second item to our tuple inside this function, paste it here, but change this to zero so that we get the height. Then we need to convert the image to an RGB image because OpenCV uses BGR, while face recognition uses RGB. So in here we type cv2.cvtcolor, pass the resized image, as well as the type of conversion we want. So cv2.color bgr to rgb We'll then need to find the face locations in our image, and we can do this by storing it in a variable, where we'll use the face locations function. Make sure to pass your RGB image in here. We'll also need to get the unknown face encodings, so we type fr.face encodings, pass in our RGB image again, and then also face locations. For this next part, we need to iterate through each of our faces as well as their locations. So in our for loop, we'll type two values, one for the encoding and one for the location. We will be using the zip function. Basically, what the zip function does is it groups the items from both the lists we'll be passing in it. So basically, this will allow us to use two loop variables while we loop through two iterables at the same time. In the zip, we'll pass the unknown encodings as well as the face locations like so. We can then finally retrieve our results by creating a results variable and then using face recognition's compare faces function. We need to pass in our face encodings list from earlier as well as the unknown face encoding, which we set to be called face encoding in our loop variable. We'll also need to add a number, which will be the accuracy our program will use to compare faces. Lower is more strict, but I'll type 0.6 because this is what the developers of the module said was the best in terms of performance. We now have our result, but we need to search for the results that returned true. So so if true in result, then we can get the name by saying name equals face names and then getting the index of where we got this true by typing result.index and then passing true. This will get us the name of the recognized person in the image. The location of the face has four values. So to retrieve them, we type top, right, bottom, left equals face location. And this will get the coordinates of the face. The reason we did this was so we can 
draw a rectangle around the face. So cv2.rectangle, then the third image, then the top left coordinate as a tuple. And for the third argument, we'll need the bottom right coordinates of the rectangle as a tuple again. Also, since we scaled our image down earlier, we'll need to multiply each of these values down here with the scale variable we set earlier. So let's just do that real quick. And then as our fourth argument, we need to pass a tuple once again. This time it will be the color of our rectangle in BGR format. So I'll make mine completely red. I'll then set a font for the text that we'll be using, font Hershey duplex. To actually put the text on the screen, we then type cv2.put text, the image, the text, which will be the name of the person, then the coordinates to put the text on. And remember to still multiply both of these with the scale variable. I'll also add 20 here so the text goes a bit lower than the rectangle. We then pass the font, then the scale of the text, which I'll make 0.8, then the color once again, which I'll make completely white, and then finally one, which will act as the thickness of the text. Outside of the for loop, we then type im show to show the final image on the screen, as well as some more code below it, cv2.wait key with one as the argument. This will act as a delay between the frames displayed on the screen. Sorry guys, there was an error in the code in the program. Um, you can see here that we're already in the known folder right here. So for some reason, I, um, I tried to go in it again, but we're already inside of it. So I'm just going to remove both of them here, or you could remove this top one, but I'm going to remove both the bottom ones. This should be all the code. And if we now run it, we can see that it picks up my face and the program is a bit slow, but that should be normal. I also have my tablet here where I have an image of Elon Musk, which the program detects fairly well. And that's it. That should be all. Let me know if you have any questions and please remember to like the video and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.